another frequency is the lowest here the frequency is the lowest and the voltage is the highest and the spark has the greatest length about five centimeters five to six This project is sponsored by PCBWay. They have all the services you need to create your project at the best price, whether it's a school project or complex professional project. On PCBWay you can share your experiences or get inspiration for your next project. They also provide completed surface mount SMT PCB assembly service at the best price and ISO 9001 quality control. Uh, visit www.pcbway.com for more services. Hello, a high voltage power supply is an electronic device that provides an electrical output at high voltages, typically ranging from hundreds of volts to several kilovolts or tens kilovolts. Very often, do it yourselves need such a device to perform various experiments, prototyping circuits, and tests. Generally, this type of device required, requires a powerful low voltage DC source and then DC to AC circuit with powerful MOSFETs, which is relatively complex to build and also expensive. Specifically in this case, I will explain to you a much simpler way to make such a device. The positive side of this design are first, uh, all the simplicity, uh, first of all the simplicity, then the low price, which avoids the use of expensive semiconductor elements, and also one of the most important features, which is the possibility of long-term operation. Of course, this less outdated design also have negative features, primarily the offline mode of operation, which means that the city voltage network is used directly, as well as the low oscillator frequency which is limited to a few kilohertz due to the semiconductors used and thus the coefficient of useful action when transforming the voltage is reduced. The device consists of several components. Two MKP capacitors with a value of 4 microfarads to 8 microfarads 400 volts. For example, I use four parallel connected capacitors of 1 microfarad each for 4 microfarads total. Next, one capacitor 100 nanofarads 400 volts, diode bridge, grads, then one N4007 diodes, two pieces, potentiometer 500 kilo ohms, T restore of the BT151 type or similar, flyback trafo from old TV or CRT monitor and few resistors. I also put an automatic fuse placed uh, at the input of the circuit which should turn off the power if the event of a circuit error or burnout of any of the components. Let's explain the principle of operation. At the beginning, at the input of the circuit, we have a switch and circuit breaker switch and fuse or circuit breaker. Then come a series connected MKP capacitor, in this case with a value of 4 microfarads. This capacitors, uh, capacitor limits the current in the circuit and if we double its value, the current will be also double, but in this particular pr practical case, its value should not exceed 8 microfarads. For the shake of safety during long-term continuous operation, I choose this lower value of 4 microfarads. Then comes a diode bridge re uh, rectifier whose output is connected to a capacitor of 8 microfarads. Next is a triggering stage, uh, this pr uh, protobot with BT151 T-Restore. 
Let me explain this part in more detail. A voltage divider using 220 kilo ohms plus 220 kilo ohms in parallel with a 500 kilo ohms potentiometer is used to control the gate of the thyristor. A 10 kilo ohm resistor goes to each side of the SCR gate from the voltage divider output uh, along with a 100 nanofarad capacitor and diode protection. Uh, and the flyback high voltage trafo is driven through 10 turns on the primary. With the potentiometer, we bring a certain uh, a certain gate current to turn it on, and at that moment the thyristor conducts and conducts and discharges the this capacitor of 8 microfarads through the primary windings of the flyback transformer. Then there is a pause until the capacitor is recharged and this process repeats. In this circuit configuration, changing the potentiometer settings change the thyristor's firing threshold relative to the capacitor voltage. When the thyristor fires at a lower capacitor voltage, the firing frequency increases, but the output voltage decreases. In this way, we can regularly regulate the value of the high output voltage, which is a particularly useful option for experimentation. I should also mention that the primary windings of the high voltage transformer usually consist of about 10 to 15 turns of isolated copper wire with a cross section of at least one millimeter. Now let's see how the device works in real conditions. First, the potentiometer should be in the far left position. We turn on the device and gradually move the potentiometer until a spark appears between the electrodes at the output of the flyback transformer. Now the frequency is the lowest. Here the frequency is the lowest and the voltage is the highest and the spark has the greatest length about 5 centimeters, 5 to 6. With further movement of the potentiometer, the frequency increases, but the voltage decreases. I will repeat this with several different slider transformers. In this example, I use flyback trafo without cascade multiplier at the output, at the output so the spark will be shorter.
And finally a brief conclusion, although it is made with somewhat outdated technology, this device has excellent positive characteristics when it comes to using it in laboratory conditions for prototyping various devices considering that it can work continuously for a long time without heating up, it does not require much knowledge to make it and its cost is very low. Safety note, please do not attempt to recreate the experiments shown on this video unless you are familiar with high voltage safety techniques. Direct current, even above 60 volt, may be lethal even when the AC supply voltage has been disconnected due to the stored energy in the capacitors. I have no responsibility on any hazards caused by this circuit. Be very, be very careful, this is a humble request.